It's post-game reaction time here on Seattle Seahawks today. I am Tom Downey, and what was that? A 17-12 loss for the Seattle Seahawks at the hands of the current NFC East leaders, the New York Giants. It's the first NFC East win over a team that is above 500 this year, which is not ideal, not something you want to be if you are Seattle. The Giants pull off the upset. That one was gross, ugly, bad. Well, all of those fit as potential answers to our first question today. Give me your one-word reaction to this loss. Unacceptable? Uh, embarrassing? Just general confusion? Uh, confusion? Maybe that's the one word there? I don't really know what that one was. You cannot let that happen if you're Seattle at home against a playoff team that's actually not that good in the Giants. That was one you were supposed to win, and you were supposed to win handily. Maybe Seattle got caught looking ahead, but that is a bad loss for the Seahawks. So let me know in the comment section your one-word reaction. Let's talk Russell Wilson, who early after the first month or so, it was like, oh, yeah, this is the year Russ wins MVP. You know what? Uh, those hopes have kind of been put on life support, and at this point, I think they're more or less dead. He did not have his best stuff against the Giants, and I know the offensive line, which we'll get to, was banged up. They had to rotate in two different guys. Jordan Simmons played. They had a, they threw in Chad Wheeler because Jamarco Jones got hurt, so they put they were down to right tackle number four. I get it. He dealt with pressure. He also held the ball way too long. And Wilson simply, he just wasn't good in this one. His final stat line checks in at 27-43, 263, a TD, and an interception. And that interception, by the way, was unquestionably Chris Carson's fault. Like, that was on Carson. Hit him through his hands, right through his face mask. But in the first half, Russell Wilson was 10-12 of 12 for 108 yards. Over 100 yards came in the fourth quarter for us. He had 146 after three quarters. He gets sacked five times, and yes, the offensive line gets some blame there. A couple of those were on Russ, too. And there was a bad one before the half where it's part of the nature of having Russ as your quarterback. He's going to hold the ball too long, and there are moments it's absolutely worth it. That's his almost backyard style of play. I don't want to try and change him too much there. There were some sacks that were his fault. Now, in the end, I don't think this was just Russell Wilson's fault or just the coaching staff's fault. There's a lot of blame to go around in this particular game. So who do you guys blame for this loss for Seattle? I thought the defense, which we're getting to, actually played pretty decently. Might not be a true fire Ken Norton type of game, but let me know who you blame for this loss for Seattle in the comment section. This will be, by the way, the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get that ad break here on YouTube, scroll on down and get your votes in. Now I do want to mention some offensive line notes here, kind of piggybacking off that Russell Wilson talk. Brandon Shell, he did not play to an ankle injury. And then backup right tackle Cedric Abway, he popped up on the injury report on Friday with a calf issue, so he did not play either, which meant that Jamarco Jones was the next man up at right tackle. And then Jamarco Jones had some sort of groin injury, so Chad Wheeler, who was promoted from the practice squad, he was out there at right tackle. They once again didn't give full Mike Iupati reps. Jordan Simmons had some as well. It wasn't great. Um, that was a, a profoundly disappointing performance by the offensive line overall. Yes, Wilson gets some blame, but look, you're kind of banged up on the O-line. I get it. That is concerning. You, you needed better play out of the Seahawks and the offensive line and the offense in general. That is what they needed to have happen. That's not the way things ended up going down for Seattle in this game. The O-line was not good enough. The offense in general was absolutely not good enough either. That is troubling for this team, and I, I don't know exactly what went wrong, but they had to have had a better showing, and I'm sure the All-22 will give away more information on that one. I know it's a banged-up offensive line. That simply was not a good enough performance between Russell Wilson, between the offensive line. Way too many mistakes, way too many issues, and that's why they mustered up just 12 points in this one. Now, we're going to keep you covered on everything going on around the Seattle Seahawks. The news, the rumors, the Josh Gordon reinstatement. Shout out Harrison for taking care of that video for you guys. If you want consistent updates around the Seattle Seahawks, hit that big red button and subscribe today. That way you don't miss out on anything going on around the Seahawks. Things should get better, although I thought the easier schedule would lead to more wins, and it, of course, did not in this particular matchup. So if you haven't already, hit that big red button and subscribe today. 
I do want to discuss Jamal Adams right now. Again, super impactful against the run on blitzes. There were also a few times he got picked on in coverage. Sometimes he made the play. Sometimes he didn't. I guess in the end, you're okay with this stat line here. 11 tackles, one tackle for loss, one sack. Also threw in an extra quarterback hit as well. Adams has really almost just been an extra linebacker for this particular team. I, I, he, of course, is still a box safety by trade, but he's been blitzing a lot. And you know what? Fun fact for Jamal Adams, uh, his sack numbers, by the way, is now at eight sacks on the season. Or, so sorry, 7.5 sacks on the season. The most by a defensive back in one season was eight back in Adrian Wilson, 2005. So Adams should set that record at some point. But again, you're hoping for a little bit more impactful play in terms of coverage, but the sacks have eh, kind of made it more worthwhile for a team that needs extra pressure. Now, today's show made possible by our friends over at BetUS. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet. Utilize promo code Seahawks125 to get you a 125% deposit bonus. That is a free bonus when you put down at least 100 bucks. And oh, by the way, if you need to kind of mourn a loss got a deal for you guys new bet us customers only we'll extend it for you seahawks jersey deal you can get a jamal adams one or a russell wilson one by emailing us seahawks at chatsports.com that is seahawks at chatsports.com once you've signed up and deposited or if you have questions hit us up we'll take care of you as well so go email us once you've signed up and deposited again for new bet us customers only that email is by the way in the comments and in the description I wanted to chat some defense here with Seattle. They are not the reason that they lost this game. Now, don't get me wrong. We'll talk about Wayne Gallman in a second half effort. In the first half, Seattle, zero points, 96 yards, 63 through the air, 33 on the ground, had a takeaway. Doesn't include the blocked punt, by the way, that in reality should have been a touchdown and may have changed this game altogether, but DJ Dallas couldn't get his fingers on it. But it was a safety. You're up 5 nothing. You should have won this game. 5 nothing and a half. You should have won. They, you closed the game. With 17 points allowed, 290 yards, 100 passing yards, which this, again, coming from one of the NFL's worst secondaries, statistically this season, again, injury's a big factor there, 190 rushing yards allowed. You should have won. If I had told you this was the statistical list for Seattle d defensively, you would have said, oh, yeah, they won. Not what ended up happening, though. And Wayne Goldman had that big 60-yard run. It led to an Alfred Morris touchdown. In the end, he, he went 16 for 135. 60 was his long, averaged over 8.5 yards per touch. The Almost all of that truly came in the third quarter in which Seattle was outgained 147 to 39. So I don't really blame the defense fully in this one. There were a couple big Wayne Goldman runs that did hurt you. So I want you guys to grade the defense against the Giants. A, B, C, D, or F. I'll be honest, I thought this was one of the better defensive performances we've seen all season. It's unfortunate that it comes in a Seahawks loss, and that is very much profoundly disappointing in terms of the impact there. So grade the defense. A, B, C, D, or F. I think I'm going to give it a B. And if, you, if I told you that, I thought this would have been an easy win for the Seahawks. Some injury notes I'm going to dive into here. Ryan Neal was carted off after a kick return. Coverage, or not coverage, blocking setup. Apparently it was a hip injury for Ryan Neal. We don't know a whole lot beyond that. Maybe Pete Carroll will have an update post-game, but as we film this, no update. He limped off to the field, then was carted off. The secondary for Seattle continues to just have all of the injury problems. Carlos Dunlap, however, and a bit of a bright side, was able to play in this matchup. Now, in the end, Dunlap's impact... Wasn't really felt, just one tackle. Seemed like he was on a pitch count, or I guess maybe snap count's more accurate for the NFL, whatever. You guys all know what I mean there. He called it a sprain, Pete Carroll did, about the Dunlap's injury against the Eagles. Was a bit limited. I think he's going to be okay. I'm glad he was able to get out there, but you kind of missed him a little bit, although he was mostly a situational pass rusher, and the Giants didn't have much success through the air anyway. It was the run defense that killed them, killed them in this one. Let's take a look now at the NFC West playoff picture time here. With this loss and the Rams went over the Arizona Cardinals, the Seahawks are now back to being the number two seed. And that game looming against the Rams in week 16 all of a sudden looks even more important. If you're Seattle, you got to win these next two. Get yourself to 10 wins. By that point, you will have basically secured a playoff spot. But 
Ah, uh, you could have moved really closely with a win in this one. Instead, you don't. And now you fall all the way out of the division leader race. You are now the number five seed in the wild card here. Saints clinch the playoff spot with their win. The Packers, now then the Rams. The Giants, by the way, all of a sudden, are looking pretty good in the NFC East with their upset win. The Bucks are 7-5. and five. The Cardinals might fall out of the playoff race right now. Minnesota all of a sudden back in it. Imagine if Minnesota had just beaten the Cowboys. They'd be 7-5 and five in fantastic shape. Instead, they lose that game somehow. So this division might very well come down to Week 16. Seahawks, Rams. Will the Seahawks win the NFC West? Make your predictions here, folks. Why for yes and for no? Let me know what you guys think. This note came out before the game, but I did just want to make a quick note of it. Trey Flowers, he's at an IR because the Seahawks simply cannot be healthy in the secondary. It is banned. He was placed on IR, or I guess maybe canceled since it is 2020, with a hamstring injury. He'll miss at least two more games. His exact return date is not yet known. Uh, it might be more of a three-game window. I think he'll be back in time for the postseason push and, and playoffs, worst case. But eh, we'll see on Trey Flowers as, look, he'd been okay this year for the Seattle Seahawks. Two pass breakups, one tackle for loss, one forced fumble. Uh, Flowers didn't always have his best stuff this season. He's been a little bit inconsistent, if, if, if we're being upfront and honest there. There were a lot of moments in which Flowers got beat. Uh, he allowed 77.5% completion percentage, 593 yards, one touchdown, just the two pass breakups. He hadn't been very good. He adds to the long list of injury problems for Seattle. Uh, Jamal Adams was banged up this year. Corner Dix has mostly stayed healthy. You already have... Uh, you know, Nico Thorpe and Marquise Blair and Lano Hill and Quentin Dunbar all on IR right now. Shaquille Griffin had missed time. DJ Reed has been actually a nice little surprise for this team after, after the 49ers cut him. But now Trey Flowers heads to IR. He's going to miss some time there, and hopefully Seattle can get back on track. A very disappointing loss in this one against the New York Giants. A game they should not have won. A game that, that they absolutely blew a bunch of parlays I had. They come up short against New York, 17-12. to 12.